As Jacksonville celebrates 200 years, we're looking back on the city's history. Jacksonville can thank the military and specifically the U.S. Navy for most of its growth over the past century. And News for Jacks reporter Joe McLean takes a look back on how the country's third largest Navy installation came to be. Naval Air Station Jacksonville was born as the U.S. was getting ready to enter another global conflict, World War II. And at the time, there was so much local enthusiasm for a base being built here in Duval County that it led to one of the most one-sided votes in Jacksonville history. In the summer of 1939, Japan had already invaded China and Europe was only months away from being thrust into the Second World War. It was clear to the Roosevelt administration that the U.S. needed to bolster its navy, particularly its coastal air defense. The federal government chose Jacksonville as a prime spot for a new naval air station, and Congress approved. They were looking for a place to put pilot training, and they also needed a place near water there so they could train in the big seaplanes. Now it was just a matter of finding the land for the air station. On July 18th, in a resounding decision, 98% of Jacksonville voters approved transferring the land to the U.S. Navy. Construction on the base soon got underway and it was hurried along. They kind of knew what was coming. They could see what's going on with the war in Europe. So they hastened construction. Naval Air Station Jacksonville was officially established on October 15, 1940. By night end of 1940, we had over 600 aircraft on NES Jacksonville alone. This base was crushed with aircraft doing pilot training, and they realized we're running out of land very quickly. At its peak in 1944, the base had more than 1,000 aircraft, with two takeoffs and landings happening every 60 seconds around the clock. Throughout the war, more than 9,300 pilots were trained at NAS Jacks, logging more than 1 million hours of flying time between 1941 and 1944. This photo was captured on June 4th and shows a group of 500 POWs arriving at the station. Technically supervised by commanders at Camp Blanding, NAS Jacks was used as overflow for more than 1,600 POWs in German uniforms. Robert Billinger is a professor at Wingate University and has spent decades studying and writing books about POWs in the United States, including Florida. Jacksonville actually, uh, in the summer of 1945, actually became larger than the Blanding um, base camp in terms of how many people. There were 1,600 some people compared to 1,200 at uh, uh, at Blanding. By May of 1946, the last of the POWs were released from NAS Jacks. With the war over, the future of the U.S. military bases were up in the air. We don't need this massive military that we have that we just won the war with. So they are downsizing and getting rid of bases all across the United States. NAS Jacksonville was just waiting to see, you know, if we were going to be on some kind of a list, but it didn't happen. We stayed on there. They did close the, 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 no, it was an outlying field, Cecil Field. They started shuttering operations at Mayport, but they held on to the property. And just a few short years later, what happens next? The Korean War starts kicking up. <clears throat> that jumpstart this base again. Any actions they were considering taking about closing, they immediately stopped. They started bringing new squadrons in here for uh, getting ready for the Korean War. NAS Jax was, of course, kept open and remained in operation as the U.S. entered conflicts in Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf. Today, NAS Jax is the largest Navy base in the Southeast region and the third largest in the U.S. Joe McLean, Channel 4, The Local Station.